Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a microwave stand. Well, the need arose for me where I needed a stand to place the microwave on in my kitchen. And as my wife and I looked around as to what was commercially available, there was really nothing that I saw that I liked. There was nothing that suited what we needed. And not only that, it's really hard to justify the prices that they charge for these things when I have a skill set like I do. So on this week's show, and it might be a multi-parter, we'll have to see how it goes, but we're going to start off uh, making our own. And I've drawn up a little bit of a drawing for it, so let's head over to the bench and have a look at that. Well, to call these a set of plans would be using the term very loosely. But what I've done is I've taken some time to sit down and sketch out to scale what I think will work for my application and the design that I'd like to see. But first, let's talk about the materials that we're going to use for this project. I'm going to be starting off by making the legs and the legs will be an inch and a half by an inch and a half by 35 inches long. And this entire project, as much as it's one of my pet peeves, the wood will be painted. Yes, I said painted. <gasps> and for that reason, I'm going to be using poplar for the legs. It will accept the paint well, um, and on top of that, it's a, it's a cheaper end of the wood. You'll probably see me using a bunch of materials that I wouldn't normally use in one of my woodworking builds, uh, things like plywood and MDF and that sort of thing, but that is strictly because of their ability to accept the paint. So, enough talk. Let's get the legs milled at an inch and a half by an inch and a half by 35 inches long. Well, we are a whopping something like three minutes into the show and there's already been a design change. And that's okay because it's my design and I have the right to change that. And the reason I changed the thickness of the legs from an inch and a half to an inch and a quarter was strictly because of stock availability. An inch and a quarter fit much nicer on that six inch wide poplar board and I thought an inch and a quarter is still a substantial leg when it comes to this piece of furniture, so I'm okay with that. Now that we have that done, we're going to mill some 11 sixteenths of an inch thick stock. That's a mouthful. And then once we're done that, we need to cut some one inch wide strips that will be the supports for the front uh, shelf faces and for our side pieces to hold our side frames together. Well, looking at my beautiful plans, I can see here that my legs are 35 inches long, is what I've said already, and I need these one inch wide strips here, and they are 22 and a half inches long. So we need one, two, three, four of them, and as well on the back, we're going to need one, two, three. It doesn't show it there, I just know that's what I need. So seven of those at 22 and a half. I also need for the sides one, two, three pieces at 15 and a half inches long, but I have two sides, so I need six of them. So six pieces at 15 and a half inches and seven pieces at 22 and a half. Now I just want to point out the thought process here. We just went through the count or the number of pieces that we need of various lengths. And the reason that I did that is I want to give you a piece of advice. If you're making a project like this and you know the dimensions because you've drawn it out like this or you have plans, regardless, if you know the number of pieces and you have multiples of one size, you are always best to cut them all at once. The reason being, if you make a mistake, let's say it's not 22 and a half, let's say it's 22 and 7 sixteenths, at least 
they will all be 22 and 7 16 and you can make those adjustments and although your piece will be 1 16th of an inch uh, shorter at least they all will be so everything will line up and it will still come together in the end if you have designed a piece of furniture where your tolerance of uh, 1 16th of an inch is going to make a difference you might want to rethink your design I know that accuracy is important but sometimes you gotta tweak it a little just to make it your own. Now what I've got is two of the legs and I've got three of our 15 and a half inch long pieces of one inch by 11 16 stock. And the way that I'm going to construct this build is I'm gonna make my side frames first. And when I get my side frames, the front faces will be held together with those 22 and a half inch long pieces that we made. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to line up and mark for our pieces. And the way that they're going to go is this top one here will be flush with the top of our legs. And then 13 inches down from the bottom of this, or 14 inches from the top, we're going to place a mark on this leg as to where the next part goes. Just like that. And then another one here, 14 inches down from the top. Just like that. And then that piece will sit right there. Now, this bottom piece will be five inches up from the bottom of the leg. So in other words, we'll have a five inch leg on our stand. I don't know why I came up with a five inch leg. I just thought it would look good. So, and uh, when I drew it out to scale, proportionately, it looked good to me. So that's what's important, right? And there we are, five inches up from the bottom, just like that. Now, how are we going to install these pieces? Well, I thought of some different ways, you know, uh, there's always pocket holes. You saw me demonstrate those on the show. And the more I thought of it, the more I thought I wanted to use some dowels. So that is what we are going to do. We don't need super sized dowels here. So I'm going to check my stock, see what I have. And we're going to drill out these cross pieces for some dowels. Well, I have one of our cross pieces and I have a doweling jig attached to it. And all I'm going to do, I've decided on quarter inch dowels because I have quite a few of them and I think that they're proportionate to the size of our stock. So I have a drill collar placed on here so that when I drill this, I'm going to get a hole in here that's a little more than half an inch deep. And then I'm going to adjust my jig here so that I'm lined up with the other hole. And I'm going to drill the second quarter inch hole for our dowels. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and drill all of my pieces so that they're all prepped and ready to go. I'll just show you what I have here with this. And there you are. You can see the two half inch or the two quarter inch holes in there drilled quarter inch on center in from each edge. So I will continue and drill all of our cross pieces with the same doweling setup. Well, this would be the bottom of one of our legs and I have all of the holes drilled in our cross pieces for our side panels. And you can see that I've placed some dowel centers in the holes that I drilled here for those quarter inch dowels. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my square here so that it lines up with that line perfectly. And once I'm happy that it's square and it's lined up there, I'm going to hold it in place. And then at the other end of this piece, I'm just going to give it just a little bit of a wrap.
And now what we have done is effectively marked exactly where our dowel holes should be. And we'll take it over to the drill press. And in each one of our joints like this, we're gonna drill a quarter inch diameter, half inch deep hole. Well, here I've done all of the drilling now in the two legs and we will just place these together just as a dry fit to make sure that everything is lining up the way that we would like it to. So you just want to place, we have our quarter inch dowels, they're one inch, one inch long, and we'll just test fit this. And everything seems to be fitting just fine. And I spoke too soon. One moment. Maybe it just needs a visit from my whackometer. Oh, I see what's going on. The other dowels are hooking. See, I knew I couldn't be wrong. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Here we go. There we go. I knew that was going to slide in there. And that is, we just turn this over. That is one of our side panels now. The framework of it anyway completed. So you want to be careful with the drilling. This one here, I have it a little proud. I'm gonna end up having to sand that flush. Same with this one here. And once I saw what was happening, I had to be a little more diligent in making sure that everything was lined up before I drilled. So I'm gonna continue this process on the other side, but don't glue anything together because there's still a lot more work to do on these side panels. Well, with our second side panel dry fit together, I've put a clamp on here just to uh, allow me to maneuver it a little easier. And we now need to make the preparations for our front and back supports. Now, again, to the dimensions that we've drawn on our print, the bottom rails will be exactly the same and they will be flush with the outside edge of our leg here. The process is exactly the same as what we've done for these side rails. But then what we're going to need to do is from the top of this one, we're going to come up eight inches and then mount another piece. And then from the top of that one, we're gonna come up five inches and mount another piece. Now at that point, these pieces here at this five inch mark should be exactly the same as the one in your side panel. And once you get that done, your final one will be the same as at the top. Now, this is only for the front panel. On the back panel, we'll just remove these four from the front panel here. On the back panel, they will mimic what we have for the sides. So there will be one here, one here, and one here. So I'm gonna mark and center punch and drill all of these holes. And you really don't need to see this done on video. I demonstrated it a couple times already. So I'm gonna do all of that drilling and all of that prep work, and then we're gonna come back and dry fit this thing together. Well, I'm doing these with a different method just to show you that you can. And essentially here, I'm just carefully marking them and using a punch and basically center punching all of the holes that I need. One thing I will caution you about when marking out, make sure that you've got both pieces dry fit together so that you don't mix up the front and the back. If these were identical front and back, it would be no big deal. But on the front, we have an extra rail that will frame in our drawer. So we just need to make sure that you have everything aligned properly and just carefully punch your holes and then drill them half an inch deep, just like we did before. So if you don't have dowel centers, don't sweat it, man. There's another way to do it. 
Well, you may have noticed that at any given point during this dry fit assembly, I have pieces put together and usually beside each other, like pieces for like pieces. And it's all a matter of trying to keep it organized. Again, like I said, you need to sort of track which is the front and which is the back of your piece. So I have a dry fit done here. It's just barely held together. Uh, it's all with dowels and a few clamps. In fact, there isn't even a clamp on um, the, 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 the front sections here. But I'm just going to use one of these strap clamps and try to pull it all together just so I can get it down on the ground and see exactly how we're making out and, and uh, what we're looking at here. And that would be our carcass, or the skeleton of our carcass, pretty much done. Um, there are a couple more pieces that we need to add. And basically what it is, is we need some panels here in our side sections. So we're going to disassemble this again, being very careful to pay attention to what goes where. And we're going to concentrate now on our side panels. And what we need to do is we need to cut some dados in order to accept a panel of quarter inch MDF. We're gonna have to run a dado all the way around this inside surface here. And for that, I'm gonna use a quarter inch straight bit in the router table. Now, you really want to be careful on the alignment of your pieces here and make sure that you're routing your dado on the proper side of your leg. Now, the other thing that you want to pay attention to here is we don't want the dado running down past this bottom side support here. So you want to make sure that you stop your dado inside somewhere within this one inch board here so that we're not coming down to the legs and causing it to show and then we got to fill it and all that other jazz so let's set up the router table and run the dados on these pieces what i would suggest to do and what i'm going to do is run them one by one and reassemble them as we go so that we don't lose track of anything that uh, we're doing or what piece goes where it would be disastrous to route on the opposite side or the wrong edge of our leg at this point in time <laughs> Well, with the routing done, we've got this dado now all the way around the inside. And you can see here how our leg remained intact because we did the stop dado in the leg. Don't forget that on the middle piece, you're going to need to route both sides. Just pay attention to which side runs on the fence. You don't have to be exactly dead center of here as long as you keep the alignment of the pieces the same. Then you'll be just fine. Now, as I said, we will be putting some quarter inch MDF panels in here a little later. Um, we ran into a little bit of an issue when we routed in that the quarter inch bit actually cut into where our dowel pins went. And that's okay because uh, the dowel pins are actually deeper than what this dado is so they'll still be able to function they're just a little sloppy right now once it's all glued and clamped together it's all gonna sort of pull itself together and be just fine so we've got the one side done i'm gonna route the other one off camera and get that all finished up dry fit and stuck over in the corner and we're gonna turn our attention to a different section of our build and unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week. 
but we've made a lot of great progress. There's a lot of different processes happening in this project, and uh, I like how you can modify them and change them to make them your own if you don't have that um, doweling jig or you don't have the dowel centers. Careful measuring and center punching, drilling, etc. will do just fine. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you get the notifications of future shows. I hope you've enjoyed part one of the build, and I hope you're going to join me next week when I bring you part two and yet another woodworking video.